how to be. But then what Paul is doing is very tangible for us to have in the way we get to live the good life where we live. And it can be used to prepare us then to be foundational upon which we build on this thing. That's the challenge of getting to the end of the life. So we're out of the three weeks of the end of the marriage. Today we are going to look at the first of six topics, which is the original sin of Jesus Christ. And just to give us that background for the speaking, remember we're talking about the birth in Christ. And Christians have certainly known in which atmosphere it was hinted at. Remember that those atmospheres on the 18th must have got quite various levels. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the photosphere. And it was in that they talk about the physics and the heavens. The atmosphere that it was first talked about at the first levels. The sun is shining on the earth and it's the fruit of the land that has life as we can see the earth. But the thing, the way that the Holy Spirit is first to talk to the things you're not to talk to the vertical ladder. It was not called the sun shining on this land as a um, planet or the earth was red, but it was the sun. You can see there the red sun there, the black red sun, but the sun is concentrated and it's nice and heat to the surface of the earth. And it's a sort of intense sunlight. Where you when you see the earth and the sun that is shining in space and it's heading to the north or south and the sun was concentrated on the earth, you see that in some of the darkest circles there is sun. The sunlight was shining at the end of the left side of the earth, in the end of the sun sun, and so the surface is there to be cooler. So remember one important step that there's a lot to move from paper or sun to the paper and action. So as I was looking at this topic of the earth and its expansions, I began to look at some notes that were written, which I could that this from a very specific angle or perspective. This word and this is very significant. When you see the word in Hebrew, remember that we are talking about heat. Heat and energy is the same thing. When I talk about heat or when I talk about energy, I'm talking about the sunlight that is coming through space and is uh, warming up the Earth's um, surface, be it water or heavens. And if you remember, it's the land mass or the water mass that radiates energy when the wind is going to heat up the air above it or around it. Yes, it uh, transfers that increase or that energy from one side of it to another. And it's actually the uh, Earth's surface, be it water or land, rock, sand, whatever, that heats up the atmosphere, not the sunlight itself. The sunlight actually helps us through the atmosphere and then heats the earth with the sun that is there. How the Earth sun or how the Earth has uh, the energy or the fact that some places are hot and some places are cold, so we'll talk about that. And then there's some basic things we're talking about air temperature, as a rain process or a chemical idea or heating, and we measure air temperature in degrees of Celsius. Remember, use an exophometer. But we also look at the earth then to get into a little bit more detail. The heat process in the six months, and the first two that we spend a bit of time just talking and explaining the basic things, what they mean by change the earth is spoken a little bit about energy then um, and the heat. This is not to do with the fact that it is greater, it's much warmer. The poles, north and south, are very close to 90 degrees, north 90 degrees, south it is colder. So we've got less energy at the poles and we've got more energy at the equator. Then we begin to talk clearly understand the process of heating the earth atmosphere, how does the earth atmosphere actually get heated up? And remember, it's sunlight coming in through the earth's atmosphere and it's actually the different surfaces or the different parts that the uh, light energy interacts with to become heat that ultimately heats up the uh, atmosphere to the top, the surface. Thirdly, we're going to look at or be able to explain, very important word there, the influence of latitude and longitude firstly, and then seasons, and the fact that there is this unequal heating of the Earth's atmosphere, colder at the equator, colder at the poles. But remember, it's all related to the fact that the Earth is colder at an axis of 23 and a half degrees to the vertical, and it's just in space on this little skew trajectory, and it is and it rotates and it also revolves around the sun. And that's the next point that if you notice the different influence between the process of rotation on the one hand, which we 
this man is not. And they released him on the other hand, which for this is season is spring and summer. This man had to be shot to die for three and a half weeks to find out for the day or the year that we live in this year. And we're going to look at two understanding the concept of transfer of energy, creating new for the transfer in the atmosphere. And we're going to understand the concept of transfer of energy and looking at specifically the influence of ocean currents on the one hand, and then ultimately wind as well. And then we're going to try and do all of this uh, through a process of using an interpretive statistics, looking at it and understanding the interpretive and structure from that. The utility that is not met. And the other thing that I think is missing, remember that the very useful tool that we are looking for, or our explanation of these concepts will be complemented by these objectives greater than as we draw together as we look through this. So I'll show that the third unit starts straight away there and look at the energy balance and heating of the Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's uh, energy balance describes how the incoming energy from the sun is used in return to space. Now, this incoming energy is also known as information. Remember, you read this book, this word inside your uh, textbooks. Information means incoming solar radiation. So, incoming solar radiation or sunlight is the same thing. It is the short wave energy, energy that's traveling at tremendous speeds, which is very hot and very intense. So, the incoming solar radiation. Is the incoming and the outgoing energy of the sun. They are the same in terms of temperature and they are constant. And remember, we spoke average temperature on Earth of about 15 degrees Celsius, which seems a bit much too cozy and makes life on this planet quite impossible. But to give you a third diagram, figure one, which shows us that it depends. Here is the sun, and the sun produces 100% solar radiation or short wave energy. Right, and as that short wave energy travels through space at the speed of light, 200,000 kilometers per second, it takes 8.2 minutes to reach the Earth's uppermost atmosphere. Now, this is the periphery of the atmosphere, which is the troposphere, and then the Earth's bit is the stratosphere, and then the troposphere before it hits the surface of the Earth, and yet at the surface of the Earth, where it is more right, and we have heat and cold and frost and all sorts of things. And notice that immediately 6% of the Earth's, uh, uh, sorry, 6 of the sun's energy, the incoming solar radiation, the information, is immediately converted back into uh, the atmosphere, uh, uh, space from the upper atmospheric influences. 19% is absorbed. Now we first talked of convection and churn, absorption and reflection. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, later. 19% of that 100% of energy is absorbed by the atmospheric plane in the areas like the uh, stratosphere and the upper troposphere by the time it falls. Uh, then 20% of that 100%, remember we divided by this percentage of sunlight, 6% was threatened, 19% was absorbed, 20% is scattered and reflected, scattered and reflected by clouds because clouds are the upright of the universe. We'll talk about that. Something that reflects more light than it actually absorbs. And then that means that only up to 4% of energy being reflected by surfaces like rock, snow, or clean water. That sort of thing is a hell of a high energy one. We only actually get 51% of the Earth's uh, uh, energy coming from the sun being absorbed. So 51% of the sun's light is then actually absorbed at the Earth's surface via rock or water. We hear from the sun uh, travel as a short wave radiation very rapidly, and it's infrared light. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum that we'll look to that in a minute, again, we're talking about all the short wave uh, energy being stripped on the right side of the spectrum, very heating and heating and then high energy. 50% of the incoming energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface. Now, that's very important, the Earth's surface. Remember, all the land in the ocean makes heat. It converts this heat into steam as well. It becomes heat, and it's similar to the process that a pump plays on a small wire pulley. That heat then gets radiated or is released into the atmosphere as a long wave terrestrial radiation. Uh, remember, you might have 
thing about the way that the book can be what you open up to us. I mean, it's a tough task that you feel like you look at each of the different things on the top row of the people who come from all the different ways. And you look at the way that they can come to the state and come to the state of 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 the
was taking up that work. And some of them have said to me, like I said, one year back, this has made sense because work has left this industry and because work has changed in this field. It's not a question of work has come, it's a question of cost has come. And so I think you are turning to make a question a lot of this field first. You need to make a call for that. You can make a call for research to come rapidly when it comes to work. And it makes no exact call for that. That's the call for the first one. So it's the best thing. So it's the first one. I'll come from two words. The first one is the best thing to call. And the third one is the best thing to call. And that's called the soft topic in the water. That's the least effective study of the water. This is the density of the water that's important for what we're going to do. Which we'll talk about later as well. So the density of the water is very well said. Um, well, water has a lot of density. A lot of it is very dense water stays, and it has a lot of density water left. A lot of cold water stays, and it has a high density in it. Um, very dense. In other words, you can put it in with a high density. Water with a high density, in other words, warm up water, rises. This cycle can take up to 1,000 years because the Indian Highway is fully stacked for a large surface ocean plains throughout the world. It has flowed into all the continents. This is the one flood that began in the Atlantic, the very north, not north of the equator, but in the south of the equator. Not the south of the Pacific Ocean. The next level is it will take more water. And what is nice to have all that water is the result of the advanced culture in Southern Africa, then South Africa over there. It is coming from the equator and the hot water is there like that. But it does not have that that cold ocean currents like the big red line coming up off the west coast of South Africa like that. And what is nice is it comes from the colder areas. And they bring in cold water up. Whereas this is coming from warmer areas, it's filtrating water and it's taking the water somewhere. So the ocean currents play a very significant role in uh, the cities and beach water there. They can lift some of the ocean currents from this map. But it's important to know these ones here in South Africa, particularly. So focus on those two because those are the ones that affect us where the current climate quite significantly. So I'm here speaking of that in story topic, and the story topic is the question of surface ocean currents. Remember, the red color indicated warm water, and the blue color indicated cold water. And when we're comparing these two to the sticky cold deep sea currents that flow off the ocean floor, we know that this is a very interesting thing. And this is what Bill Lehman started to show us now. The very bottom below it shows the conveyor belt of surface of Australia. This conveyor belt of both surface and subsurface currents, water vapor currents, and water that filters out of the ground. Here you can see in this dark green, this is the very cold area water that comes out of the sea. And this orange line represents the cooler or slightly warmer in comparison to that water which is on the surface. Okay? And that is because the surface is somewhere between what we call the if you look here, this is Africa, and then South America, and then North America, and then this is Europe and Asia, and you have Australia back here, and India and Southeast over there. So you can see that the water moves um, in this cold conveyor belt. So it comes from the warm water stops here, and the West Coast in Africa uh, underneath the, the most density here in India and stops in all those different places like that. And then it moves away from the top slope and then it goes deeper down into the water and that's the cold. So the cold water is distributed in this sort of fashion. Some parts of Africa are relatively cool southeast towards Egypt and Australia. And then here in this blue zone in the middle we call this the Pacific Ocean which is the Pacific Rim of Fire and all those uh, and that earthquake activity that happens in that part of the world. The water drops less and it becomes warmer, and now the surface water is warmer. It circulates less, but it's distributed. Um, so, 
to make that easier. So if you we do have to find some friends out, especially if you're we reward you for things that we reward you for a friendly reminder that you're doing them. So it could be the same thing that we're coming up with and it could be just several times as a group. So being able to start to commit to that sort of thing and being already to be out of the changes to what you need to do. Find a friend group with a bit of faith and one point of three says we need to the same things in the Bible. Here's the end. And pray in the same way that you have said to the Bible. Stop thanking God and have to work for something. Is it a chocolate bar? Is it a prayer bar? Or is it a tip bar? Now, what do you want to be thinking? Or what can I not see? Some people need to say coffee. How do you need to say coffee? And the same person needs to say coffee is fine. And some other ones have a little too much or it's not too hot. So the answer to get for two uh, two models is tip bar. Um, we've got
himself in South Africa and was trying to challenge the system to be righteous in the East because he had to stimulate the South Africans on the equation. And the equation we followed it uh, to the right side of the world was East and to the other side of the world was West. So it's been a long time to find the big battle. So the great battle was found uh, in Palestine. The sun and the sun came down in the East and the West. Uh, but the good thing is not the East is actually more war in the East than it is in Palestine. So I'm going to point out to this picture here of the Old Man. Yeah, that's the first bus station. And I'm going to tell you to go in. It is not pretty uh, speaking to it. For one thing to say that the sun rises in the East of South Africa too much. In which case, it's for us to make it for its uh, name in, in Shazana. Um, it brings up the sun's rays all over the top of God. And it's almost like that. And this is it. Now it's called the Mecca. You get uh, thorns on your feet. So that is Let's talk about the new area of the building, which is at the summit. The sun is now more direct from up to the east to the center of the planet at the top of the uh, Capricorn, which is sitting here on the opposite side. It's at the summit, and it's just now in the way back to the Europe's winter. But we told you that in winter, it would make you dry out the road. The sun is all over the tropic of Capricorn, it's actually not east and north. We were to measure the angle where the sun is being resting on the angle of the winter. And the end of the winter will come back to Earth where it will be calmer and more like summer because all the sunshine comes up. Also, for this question here, right, we can say that the sun is moving over the sun through the sky. So the sun actually rises from the northeast and sets in the northwest. So it's a very quiet moment how high you get from your box for asking this question like that. So the thing is, what the key or the question word in the question is, 